In this episode, we're going to show you how we built an inexpensive yet incredibly strong base plate for the cargo area of our Forerunner. On it, we're easily able to attach our fridge on a slider and later a drawer system. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. Well, this can't be right. Now all the measurements and dimensions you'll see in this video fit our 2017 Forerunner. Before you do any cutting and drilling, measure your vehicle first. There may be differences between models and model years, but everything will basically transpose to any Forerunner model. We begin by taking the carpet out of the cargo area. First thing we need to do there is take out this wedge shaped piece of trim. At the back door, there's this piece of sill trim that has to come up too. And it can be a little stubborn. Now we can just pull the carpet out from underneath the side trim panel on both sides and it's out. The foam comes out for now. You'll uh, notice we already have ours modified a little bit to fit our base. We'll talk more about that later. We're building our base out of a sheet of half inch premium birch plywood, four by four feet. That comes really close to our final dimensions. Now we're gonna cut it down. First, the side to side width. Then, front to back. The rear edge of the base needs to be undercut 20 degrees to fit our sill trim better. There needs to be a slot cut in the base to fit around the back seat hinges with a 45 degree angle right here. At the back door, our base is going to sit up a little bit higher than the surface of the door sill trim, leaving a sharp edge. We need to round that over. We'll also round over the front edge so the seat back doesn't rub against the sharp edge. To do that, we'll be using our router with a quarter inch round over bit. A slight 20 degree undercut bevel needs to be cut in the base to fit this side trim a little bit better. Starting three inches from the end. Well, the cutting of the base is all complete. Now let's uh, figure out how we're gonna bolt it in. Now on to one of the more important aspects of this project, how we're going to securely bolt it to the floor. In the front, we're gonna use these factory weld nuts where these brackets once bolted on. In the center, we drilled holes 
right through the floor. In the rear, again, we're drilling holes through the floor. Just so happens that these bolts are the same ones that hold our air tank up underneath. Now comes the somewhat difficult task of mounting our flat plate on a not so flat floor. To accomplish that, we need to build legs to mount on the bottom of our base. Now to make those legs, we simply took some of that half inch plywood, cut it into blocks along with some 3 16 of an inch thick plywood I had laying around, and we're going to stack them up to the thicknesses that we need. Alright, so I've got the base sitting in the back right where we want it. Now I'm marking the holes that we need to drill through those legs by going up through these holes that we have drilled in the floor. Now we don't want the heads of our bolts to stick up above the surface of the base. So we're going to drill some countersink holes. Uh, we got started by drilling some small pilot holes through from the bottom. And now we're going to use a spade bit with a little bit of uh, masking tape on there just as a depth gauge. Now the legs in front are a little bit more complicated since the floor there slants at about a four degree angle. Uh, we're going to take care of that on our belt sander. Marking the holes for the front legs is a bit more difficult than the process we used for the center and the rears. Uh, in the front, you can't come up from the bottom with a pencil and mark those holes. So, we have a plan. This is what we came up with. These are quarter inch dowel rods. We tapered the ends a little bit to fit down into the nuts. Then we take our leg and we put it down over them. That's going to get those holes centered perfectly. Then, these are dowel rod centering punch things. I'm not exactly sure the correct term, but we're going to sit those down in the holes at the top. Then we slide the base very carefully over the top. Line up the rest of these bolts. Make sure they're lined up. And then come over here and there is where we drill our holes. To make these front mounts super strong, we're reinforcing them with plates that we cut out of 16th inch steel. So to remount this piece of trim, we simply took our sawzall and just chopped everything off the bottom. Uh, then we put it inside. We took the factory D-rings, 
put them in there and then we marked for holes and now we're going to take these these are called t-nuts and as you can see they're threaded and these are going to go on the underside of the base what you do is you just put them put them in the hole and then just simply tap them in and then the trim will be coming up from the uh, top and this is the underside you're looking at and it'll simply bolt on like that now this next step you're going to need to come up with your own measurements because what you put on your base is likely going to be different than what we're putting on but the, the process is the same now when we go to pull out our fridge or our heavy drawers it's going to put an incredible amount of pressure on those front attachment points so they have to be super strong to strengthen all the attachment points we're placing pieces of plywood on the underside doubling the thickness of our base so the attachment bolts will never pull out remember those T nuts that we used earlier for that piece of trim we're using the same ones underneath for our anchor points now to accommodate those mounting points on our base that are on the sides we'll have to do a little bit of trimming here we're going to be reusing our foam panel that was underneath uh, mostly just for sound deadening uh, but we do have to cut out pieces for our legs and for our mounting points uh, just don't use a router now as you can see we've already got the foam on the back of our panel because it's just easier to do it this way Now we finished off our panel with two coats of a real good primer and then three coats of a spray-on bed liner. Now it's time to bolt it in. We're going to start in the front with these bolts, but we're not going to tighten anything up until we get all the bolts in. Onto the middle bolts, we're using big fender washers to add even more strength to these. To make sure that the middle attachment bolts will never pull through the floor, we're reinforcing them from underneath with plates of 16th inch steel. But before we put them on, we're going to spray it down with some fluid film to help prevent rust. And that will never pull through. We're also using nylon lock nuts under here just make sure that they never come loose these rear bolts are especially long because not only are they going through the floor but also through the strengthening rib Now to bolt our fridge slider on to the base, we're using quarter inch bolts with lock washers. Now until we get the drawers built and in here, or when we're not running with them, we're gonna plug off these holes with these little plastic plugs, just so no dirt gets in there. Give it a try. Well, that's it. Now about those drawers. Wait, let me get a paper and pencil. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. 
And don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified.